It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, as always, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, chief investment officer, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this fantastic weekend here in the fall? Yeah, it's a beautiful weekend ride. It was a beautiful week on the street of dreams with the market hitting all-time record highs once again. It is. Uh, we are in the midst of one of the greatest bull markets of all time. Unbelievable. And Bob, just uh, out of curiosity, how much would you pay for a watch? Uh, you know, Ry, I'm, a, I'm kind of a basic frugal individual and you know, a little basic Timex at uh, 20 bucks is fine for me. 20 bucks for a Timex. Not bad. Not bad. How about $17.8 million for a Get watch, Bob? Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this past week, Paul Newman's watch, I believe it was from the 60s, his, his wife, who's the actress, Joanne Woodward, bought him a watch mm -hmm. as a gift. It was a Rolex for like 200 bucks. Well, it went to auction this week, and the estimates were about $10 million, and it ended up being sold for $17.8 million. Unbelievable. Boy, I just wish there was a market where I could short watches, son. <laughs> Well, I mean, I do love Paul Newman, so I, I don't know if I love Paul Newman that much, but uh, you know, as far as I know, that watch just tells the time. Well, I anyway, give that investor a call and say, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> cool hand Luke. I like the reference, cool Bob. Luke, I like the yeah. reference. Well, we have a great show this morning for you to help on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about financial silver linings, invariably on your journey to create financial security you're going to encounter obstacles along the way. Well, Bob and I are going to show you how to take these problems and basically use them to your benefit. Uh, we're going to talk about shopping for your next financial advisor, or maybe it's more like courting, but making the decision to use or change your financial advisor is a huge decision. We're going to give you some questions you should be asking when you hire your next financial professional. Along with this week's financial pornography, we're going to tell you what's out there in the news that you need to avoid. In our spotlight segment, we have our certified financial planner, Courtney Dominguez, on the show this morning, and she's going to talk about a real retirement plan and some of the mistakes that this specific couple made so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. Let's hop to it. Let's talk about those financial silver linings. There are certain circumstances that are seemingly negative, but if handled correctly, can actually work to your advantage. And Bob, since we're near the end of the year here, the one that I think about is tax losses. How can you use a tax loss to your advantage, and specifically right now since we're coming up on the end of 2017? Well, here's what I recommend for you, Ry. Take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. How yeah, do I do that? Absolutely. When you take when you look at capital gains, every year the IRS re requires that you pay taxes on any gains or any income that you have. Now, losses, on the other hand, can only be used to offset capital gains or ordinary income to a certain to a certain amount. But you can carry that loss forward and use it against future gains and future income. So I call it the loss bank. You know, when you have a loss in your portfolio, you know what you should do? Take it. Yeah, exactly right. And with a tax swap, you can actually, let's say you like the investment that you're in. Let's give you an example. You own the S&P 500 at Vanguard, and then you can go over to Fidelity and buy a very similar S&P 500-like fund you can be in the same investment, but use those losses as well. So, you know, there's a lot of, of creative you have to ways. Wait Thirty you days, and um, but when you offset that loss, right? I mean, I think that's the key. It's it's having a defined portfolio where there's investments that you want to own long term, right? Have you ever? Do you know any market that's ever gone to zero? Hmm. Never. Never, right? So if it never goes to zero, then every dip is temporary. And if you have a diversified portfolio and everything's up at the same time, I think you might have a problem. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. So, you know, the key there is is just making sure also that your your tax advisor and you are on the same page as well because there's a lot of things you should be talking to about your or your financial planner should be talking to your tax advisor about to make sure that you're looking at all these different things. But right now, tax swaps, tax losses that you can take 
this is the time of year to do it. So start taking a look at your portfolios and see where that makes sense. You know, another silver lining that I would look at is when your company is doing away with pensions and giving you a lump sum buyout instead. A lot of times you have the option of taking a monthly income from your company, or they can give you a big lump sum. You can roll it into an individual retirement account for yourself, and you need to make the decision what's a better way to go. And Bob, in your experience, what is the better way to go? Take the lump sum or take the monthly income from, from your company? What I like about that is you, you've created a spreadsheet, of course, right? The, the, the spectacular spreadsheet that does the analysis to show whether it makes sense to take the distribution from your company or to invest the proceeds. On average, Rye, I found that it makes sense to invest the proceeds because not only do you get a better return on the money, you also have more control, you're more liquid, and it lasts longer. That's right, because you know the analysis you have to run, and this is very similar to annuities as well, because a lot of times if someone is selling you and they're selling you an annuity, <laughs> annuities are sold, not bought, basically they'll say, hey, look, you're going to get an income for life, but you have to give up your principal to receive that income for life. And if you think about it rationally, what is the pension company, if it's your company telling you that they're going to pay you out over time, or what's that insurance company doing? Well, they're just slowly paying your money back to you over time with a little bit of return on top. So what mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself is, can I get a better return on my money and then just take my money in, in my control over time as opposed to giving up my principal to somebody else I don't know and essentially you know, being paid out over time? And that's the kind of numbers you have to run. And that's the kind of numbers that we can run with our spreadsheet and figure out what's the most optimal or the best solution for you specifically. Yeah, I think sometimes you also right, have to look at your personality. Are, are you someone who can handle having a large sum of money in a liquid portfolio? I've always heard horror stories about people who have been given a lump sum and they think it lasts forever as long as there's checks in the checkbook and they end up just you know spending all the money and uh, not letting it work for them. So you really have to know your own financial aptitude for how much you can handle risk and how much you can handle having large sums of money available at your disposal. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the only way to find that out is to have the numbers run. If you're sitting there thinking, I need to know what tax losses I need to take this year. I need a concerted plan that looks at everything. Do I take the lump sum? Do I get a monthly distribution? Do I buy an annuity? What's the best way to prepare for retirement? Well, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for your total financial master plan, and we're going to determine how financially organized are you on a scale of 1 to 10. Are you a 1? Are you a 5? Well, how about do you want to be a 10? Bring in all your financial documents. You know, Bring in those 401ks from your old companies. Bring in your brokerage accounts, insurance policies. We'll analyze everything. We'll organize it. We'll simplify it. We'll put it into one portal so we can analyze everything and make sure you have a concerted effort, a concerted plan for retirement. And we're going to look at all your investments on our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. It's a three-page document where we're going to look at all the important analytics. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to break down all the fees you're paying, including those hidden costs you don't know you're paying in those mutual funds, insurance products. We're going to look at income. Can we increase the income or cash flow your portfolio produces annually? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to make it retirement ready. And we're going to look at diversification. Do you have a lot of overlap in your portfolios? Do you own a lot of different funds that all own the same things? We're going to show you where the pitfalls or the flaws in your portfolio are so you can get properly diversified. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan and determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now Bob and I have been working on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So if you want to get financially organized, give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you, our total financial master plan, no obligation, no cost. Just give us a call, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. 
This is Bob Payne. This is Ryan Payne. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning, this is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer at Payne Capital Management. And the market was driven higher this week by earnings, especially from big technology companies, and also announcements from the ECB, the European Central Bank, that announced that their stimulus would linger longer, widening the gap between monetary policy expectations in the Eurozone and that in the US. You see, Europe is continuing their quantitative easing program, while in the U.S., not only are they going to raise rates next month, but they're also no longer implementing quantitative easing. And that's one of the reasons why we see the 10-year German Bund yielding less than a half of 1% and the U.S. 10-year Treasury at 2.45%. The spread between those two yields is the widest since 1999 of over 2%. So will U.S. rates continue to go up? Well, you got to wonder, if you're a big German insurance company, those yields at around 2.5% in the U.S. look a lot more attractive than less than a half a percent, you know, over in Germany. Meanwhile, earnings keep coming in at record numbers, and the big reports this week came from both old and new tech, with companies like Amazon and Google blowing out numbers late Thursday evening. But we also saw good numbers from the old technology companies, Microsoft and Intel, both being driven to all-time record highs. And that's why we're seeing this year so far that growth stocks, are outperforming value stocks, almost on a two-to-one ratio. For example, growth companies are up close to 22% this year, while the value index is up around 12. But the big winner is still the emerging markets. And don't forget, emerging markets are heavily driven by technology. So with technology measured by the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ is up around 26%, is now tied with emerging markets at around the same level. And the big news on the week is commodities finally are showing a positive return for the year. Now, commodities are down as much as double digits earlier in the year, but with the move in oil above $50 a barrel, both Brent and West Texas crude, commodity prices have been creeping up ever since. Now, that means there's probably more inflation in the system than the Federal Reserve recognizes. That's something we're going to need to keep an eye on. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's participating in this big booming bull market? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's goals here at No Pain, No Gain is education. Our goal is to make sure you're getting the best advice, the most rational, pragmatic advice when it comes to making retirement decisions. Cut through all the noise. There's a lot of information out there. And our newest guide we put together, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. You can download a free copy by simply texting 555-888, the word bullish. That's the word bullish, spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. And you can get our latest guide, Truth About Taxes, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want them to. So go ahead and text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888 and retrieve our guide. That's 555-888, the word bullish. And in this segment, we want to talk about when you're being courted by a financial advisor. Uh, When you're deciding to work with someone to advise you on your finances, it's not something you should take lightly. Realistically, you're trying to pick someone who you can rely on for decades. It's a long-term commitment, kind of like courting and marriage. You know, I think about, Bob, all the clients we still have today that you literally worked with from 40 years ago. And we have clients literally from your career when it started back in the late 70s, early 80s, which you know, that, that actually blows my mind. And I think you know, some of the questions you need to be asking, one of the biggest and most important today is, are you a fiduciary? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Ryan. And it just goes back to what happened 42 years ago. Do you know what happened 42 years ago? 42 years ago, you uh, started in the business. (laughs) Yes. So here I was, uh, 21 years old, 
Now, most 21-year-olds don't have a clue. Wouldn't you agree? I think that's a when fair it comes assessment. To finances. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things in life at 21. You don't. <laughs> you, there's a lot of things you don't know. Let's be real. Well, I, I got to tell you something. Maybe I haven't told you this before, but at 21, I didn't have a down payment on a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but the Not thing is, payment. you learn, you know, you, you learn from working every day and, you know, from great training and from experience. But, you know, from day one, almost every client that I worked with always asked the same thing. They said, Bob, I want to invest the way you invest. I want to invest, you know, my portfolio the same way you invest your portfolio. And I think that's what really defines a fiduciary. I think it's really important that someone who recommends a portfolio strategy to you as an individual investor, you know, follow the same tenets and follow the same strategy. Now, look, everybody should have a customized asset allocation. Don't you agree? Yeah. I mean, customization is what it's all about. And that's where process comes in. You know, your retirement plan shouldn't look like your brother, your sister's retirement plan, or your neighbor's has got to be unique and germane to you. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's why I find it, it's, you know, it's so fascinating because people ask me all the time. I've been asking me for 42 years, Bob, how often do you look at my portfolio? And when I tell them every second of the day that the market's open, they're a little bit in shock until they realize that I'm a fiduciary, that it, I have to invest my money and invest their money as if it's my own. And as a result, right. all my clients own the same basic strategy that I own. They just have a customized asset allocation that gives them the highest probability of achieving their goals. And you yeah, know what really upsets me, Rye? When I find, you, you know, I find so many times there are stockbrokers and insurance salesmen out there that are pitching product and they don't own a dime of the products that they pitch. They don't have any money invested in the way they're telling or selling people on how they should invest. And to me, that's the thing you really got to watch out for. I mean, what a fantastic question. Not to ask not to a prospective financial advisor you want to work with, but even your existing financial professional. You know, this annuity that you put me into or this mutual fund, do you own that in your own personal portfolio? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I mean, that, what a great like, way uh, to put... Back in the internet era when you had these analysts who were putting buys, opinions on these stocks, and then after they would uh, you know, write the report, they would text their buddies about what a dog the investment was and how they wouldn't put their worst enemy into that investment, even <laughs> though they're out there publicly touting the stock. I mean, it was unconscionable. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that, that's a great reason why you need to know and understand you know, what is the, the person recommending doing in their own personal portfolio. I think the other important thing is, is going back to process, is if the advisor you're looking to work with or, or already working with doesn't have a process. I mean, I think the one thing that we run into all the time, and we probably look at, what, 50 portfolios a month. We probably see Easily. more more portfolios than anyone, you know, probably in the universe when it comes to how many different portfolios we see. And the biggest trap that we find that you run into is you end up having what we call collection of investments. <laughs> you know, you yeah. have a diff couple of different accounts here, there, all these different brokers, a bunch of lots of different <laughs> products. And there's no rhyme or reason for it. It doesn't fit into a process. It doesn't have anything to do with your retirement goals. Yeah, I think it's so critical that uh, you have a portfolio of investments where you know what you own and you know why you own it. And with that being said, you know, Ryan, what do you think the what do you think the average answer is to the question, why did you invest in that specific investment? What do you think the normal answer is, or the average answer? Because I was hoping it was going to have a good return over time, something along those lines. You would hope that was the case, but basically it, it, the normal response is, someone told me it was good. <laughs> yeah, how's that for rationale, right? Well, that someone is usually a salesman, right, or salesperson who has no vested interest in your success. They're just selling product. And unfortunately, that's how the whole industry was built and how it's worked for years. Now, there are some great advisors out there and there's, there are fiduciaries, but the majority of people in the financial services industry are not fiduciaries today. And the thing that blows my mind is the firms they work for are still fighting the government on, you know, making us all fiduciaries. And that's that's the thing that really surprises me. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, right. In this day and age, you think that would just be the par for the course that you should be acting in your best interest. And you know, that's the other cool thing. You know, we talk a lot about our 360 portal, which I love, is because it really can verify: Do you have a collection of investments, or do you have a properly diversified portfolio? You know, I sat down with a gentleman the other day, and we just went through, and then literally, he had probably seven different accounts. He had about 30 different mutual funds, and we, we were able to just plot everything into this portal so we could see everything in one place, and then we were able to break down everything he owns, and we were able to see that 
every fund he owned virtually owned the same underlying investments just because he had the Fidelity Growth Fund and then the Vanguard Prime Cap Fund or Contra Fund, they all own the same thing. So it's like you know, there was no reason to have that many investments and that many accounts because when you broke down what was actually inside and you were able to look at it, he had a collection of investments and had no idea, Bob, that that's the way he was actually allocated. This is the small part of being financially organized, right? And on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do you find some of our new clients? I think in best case scenario, you're at a five or six. Worst case scenario, you're at a one or two. So right, when you ask these people on a scale of one to 10, where would you like to be? What do they tell you? Nine or 10, absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't you want to have your entire financial life locked down, organized? If something happens to you, everything's in one place so that your loved ones know what to do. I mean, that's, I think that's everyone's goal right now, especially given the fact that we have all the technology to do it. If you're sitting here right now thinking, I'm not financially organized, and on a scale of one to 10, I'm less than five, and I would love to be your nine or 10. Here's what we'd like to offer. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least $200,000 for retirement, Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, and if you're one of the next 10 callers, here's exactly what we'll do for you. We're gonna review your tax return with our CPA partner to make sure you're utilizing every tax benefit available. We're gonna look over your estate plan to be certain that it's not an IOU to the IRS. We hope not. And lastly, we're going to look at all of your investment portfolios, no matter where you custody the assets. And we're gonna run for you our 360 financial portal to see if you're fully diversified, if you're being overcharged on your investments because of hidden fees and charges, if you're optimizing the income that your portfolio can generate. And finally, we're gonna put it all together into one customized wealth projection to answer the age old question, are you gonna outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? We're gonna help put it all together into one customized wealth projection, which will answer that age old question. Are you gonna outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family and I have been working on now for over 40 years. We wanna help take your family from your financial point A to your point B with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as any fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Be one of the next 10 callers if you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Get a full review, a real financial review at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial advice. Bob, what did you find this week in the world of financial pornography? Well, you know, Rye, on the weekends, you're out there living the dream, and I just ah. sit here in my comfy chair reading every bit of financial pornography available. And Isn't that living the dream? It just drives me crazy. <laughs> Everything I read over the last weekend whether it was The Economist or Barron's, Wall Street Journal, every financial newspaper said the same thing. You know, get ready for the crash. It's not a bear market. You know, are you prepared for the crash? Danger, collapse, or overvaluation extended. The market's going to crash. Not one article that I read talked about this big booming bull market and how profitability, how productivity is increasing on a global basis. It's just amazing that the financial press, financial pornography is anti-investment. It always is. And that's why we can't allow our listeners to read this stuff. Yeah, that's my biggest pet peeve right now. So I'm glad you brought it up is we're literally in one of the greatest bull markets of all time. No one believes it because (laughs) literally the conventional wisdom is, well, the market's at all time highs. So clearly it has to crash soon is the assumption. (laughs) And, you know, when you're, you're focusing on all these things that could go wrong, 
And the one piece of data, the one that only really matters over time, is do companies make more money today than they did before? And moving out into the future, are they projecting to make even more money? And all those things right now are happening. In fact, I saw a statistic the other day, Bob, year over year, companies in the S&P 500 on average made 20% more in earnings in the last 12 months than they did 12 months ago. I mean, think about that. If you own a company, you work for a company, and your company has made 20% more money this year than last year, your company's probably worth more money. Same thing with the stock market. And not only have companies made more money, and are they beating the estimates that all the analysts or gurus have projected they're going to make, they're also giving their guidance upward as well. That means when they're looking out into the future, they all see their businesses making even more money. And you've heard us say it before, and it's one of the most important things you can hear, is the market is a slave to earnings. And if earnings are good and they're going to go up, that's really all the market cares about. So this eminent crash, Bob, you're talking about, or you know, some kind of big correction in the market, it's, the odds are probably not that likely just because the main driver of stocks looks very healthy right now, and that's profits. And profits look yeah, very I've never, good. I've never entered a bear market where profits were accelerating. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's when companies start, their outlook is, oh man, things don't look good in the future. We think earnings are going down. That's a bad sign. That's not the mm-hmm. signs we're seeing right now. So that's why it's no, important no, just too. No one's writing about it. <laughs> yeah, no one's writing about it. Exactly. And that's why it's important now that you have your money invested properly and that you're not sitting on the sidelines waiting for this this crash or pullback because you just might not get it. And that's one of the things that we see a lot. And you probably are sitting there thinking, man, I'm sitting with two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 in cash, earning nothing. And you're going to need that money growing for retirement. You need to assess those things now. You don't want to wait for this eminent correction that may not happen. So that, that's very important. We talk about that a lot. I had a really good article this past week, Bob, and it's more bad news for mutual fund managers and money managers in general. And we always have bad news for money managers in general. (laughs) There was a study that was done recently that found that since 1926 in the US market, the best performing 4% of listed companies attributed for most of the performance. So that means of the S&P 500, let's say about 500 stocks we're talking about only about 20 of those 500 stocks drove the entire return of the market, which is incredible. So that means if you're a professional manager, you'd have to pick the right 20 stocks out of 500 to really outperform the market. So if you think about the odds and statistics of that, it's almost impossible to be that smart that out of 500 companies, you could pick the 4% that are going to do the best. And if you think that's one of the reasons why, you know, if you hear the show often, we don't like mutual fund managers, professional money managers typically underperform over time. We like indexing. And this is one, and just another reason why is because it's almost impossible to be able to pick those winners out of so many companies you could pick from. Well, the odds are really stacked against them, right? If they select such a small group, what a professional money manager does is try to, if they're managing the S&P 500, for example, they're going to try and pick the 250 stocks that they think are going to go up and avoid the 250 they think are going to go down. And if the 20 winners end up in the 250 they avoid, uh, of course they underperform. But it's not a matter of will they underperform. History shows that they do. Over the last 15 years, less than 19% of actively traded mutual funds or money managed accounts outperform their underlying index net of fees. So it's kind of a waste of money to try and find a guru who can pick stocks better than the market. The market's smarter than everybody. That's really what it tells you. And it, and that amazes me now when I see, when I look at your portfolio and I still see you own a lot of these high cost mutual funds and, you know, in face of all this data that proves that there are no gurus out there, right? There are no there's no one who has uh, gifted insight into the future, as you always say, Bob. You know, to, to sit there and think you're going to game the market, it, it's just been proven over and over again. And this is just another stat that says that you, know, you have to be even smarter than smart to be able to pick those couple winners. And it's just impossible to pick that ahead of time. You know, I always look at you know, who would have guessed that uh, a lot of things would have turned out the way they've done in the past, right? I mean, who would have guessed that Apple computers, which 
let's face it, that company was almost dead before Steve Jobs came back to it in the late 90s would become you know, one of the most, uh, the largest companies in the world. These things ahead of time are impossible to see. You know, when I met Steve Jobs, Roy, he wasn't even at Apple any longer. He was at Next Computing. Apple had fired him. You know, the stock was at eight. <laughs> they had gotten rid of the purse of the genius that would make billions of dollars for them. You know, the company wasn't smart enough to keep him around. So it wasn't until he got back to Apple that it turned out to be such a great winner. But, you know, this active management of equities, they're not the only managers that underperform. Look at these mutual fund managers of bonds. Look what happened just in the last two weeks. The big mutual fund companies that own Puerto Rico municipal bonds sold them at 30 cents on the dollar. They finally Ouch. got rid of their position by taking, you know, a, a dollar of, of bonds and sold it for 30 cents on the dollar. That's a huge loss. And there again is where active management doesn't add value, it detracts value. Yeah, I, you know, ironically, and sounds contrary to popular belief, but that's really the way it is. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I have a lot of mutual funds, I have a lot of, I have a collection of investments, I don't have a real strategy that's tied into my goals, here's your shot to get a review and get your financial life in order. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run our total financial master plan and we'll determine, number one, how financially organized are you on a scale of one to 10? Are you a one? Are you a five? Well, how would you like to be a 10? We'll take all of your financial documents and information. We're going to simplify it, organize it, put it into one portal so you can see everything in one place, have access to everything in a simple location so we can look at your diversification. Yeah, We can look at making sure that you have your financial life and working order. And we're going to look at all your investments. We're going to take every investment that you own. We're going to put it on a simple three-page document, our investment analysis spreadsheet. And we're going to look at all the important analytics. Number one, we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. Can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? We're going to show you how to increase it. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden pesky fees in your portfolio. We're going to show you all the costs in your portfolio. Those money management fees for those mutual funds, those insurance policies, annuities. And we're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. We're going to put all your money in one portal so we can see every product investment that you have. Do you have a collection of investments or do you have a real investment strategy? We're going to show you how diversified you are, what pitfalls you have, and how to improve on your diversification. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So ask yourself, on a scale of 1 to 10, how well are you financially organized? If you want to improve on that score, give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement. Our team at Payne Capital Management will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call. 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We're No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Brian Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of our goals here, as always at Payne Capital, is education, education. Again, there's so much information out there about your finances. We like to cut through all the noise, use our 40 years of experience just to give you practical, pragmatic advice on making the right financial decisions to make sure that you can create financial security for you and your family. And our latest guide we put together, The Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you want to check it out, you can access our guide for free. If you text the word 
bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, that's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can get our latest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want that to happen. Check out our latest guide. You get free access to it if you text the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web and you can find out, is Bob's hair real? It is. <laughs> but check it out at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com www.bbullish.com, and you can learn a little more about what we do at Pain Capital Management. I'm going to get access to the show. If you miss an episode, you can always check it out there right on the World Wide Web. And if you have any questions you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com, and we will answer you directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we always get some pretty good questions. The first one comes in from Lucy. She's in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. She writes in, Bob, how often should I be meeting or talking with my financial advisor? I get a birthday card from his company, but that's about it. Birthday well, Lucy, nice, that, would be the, um, that would be the line in the sand for me because I hate getting birthday cards now because I don't like to celebrate these birthdays that keep coming so quickly. So that's the last thing you want from your financial advisor. What you want from your financial advisor is advice. And, you know, if I if you go back and you look at all of our clients. Now, the thing about financial services, it's a zero sum game. Every client that's transferred to us transferred from somewhere else. What was the right. number one reason why all of our thousands of clients transferred to us over the last 40 years? Oh, I mean, easily lack of service and attention. And let's face it, this is a very interpersonal relationship. And your financial plan is a working document. So not having some sort of updates and connection with your advisor is probably one of the number of reasons why people come work with us or leave their advisor. Yeah, and that's the key. I mean, if you have a financial advisor, you have what we call a process-driven strategy. If you have someone who calls you only when they want to sell you something, that's an event-driven strategy. And we found over you know the years of study that we've done, plus our own 40 years experience, that a process-driven strategy has the highest probability of success because it's based on the personal goals of the individual and their family, not based on you know what product is being pushed at that firm or what that uh, broker or salesman thinks that, that given day. So Lucy, in answer yeah. to your question, the key is you should have an advisor who advises you on your specific goals and how well you're tracking through that goals. Now, one of the things that uh, the biggest innovation in the history of, of our firm has been our 360 financial portal, where it gives you a window into your financial life so that you can drop in anytime and see what your net worth is, see what your portfolio values are, look at your wealth projections in real time anytime you want to look at it. And whenever your advisor calls you to review it with you, it's done real time. So you know exactly how much you're worth today, what you're going to be worth tomorrow, what you're going to be worth every year for the rest of your life, net of inflation and taxation. To me, Ryan, that's a truly event driven strategy. I mean, process. <laughs> to me, that's a truly <laughs> Not process driven yeah. strategy. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And I, just to add to that real quick, because right, I like that difference of event driven versus process driven. But you might be asking yourself, what does process driven even look like? And I think the litmus test for an advisor you're working with now, or if you're looking to work with a potential advisor, we're talking a lot, a lot about that today, is what are the first things that you're doing when you walk into their office? And if it's not establishing what your goals are, if it's not looking at where you're trying to go to, that's putting the, the cart before the horse, and that makes no sense. And that's probably a good indication of, I'm working with a real financial professional here, or I'm working with a product-driven or event-driven salesperson. Because if you're not establishing where you're trying to go first, I mean, you know, we always talk about, we call it the A to B strategy here at Payne Capital. We're just trying to take you from point A to point B, we always say with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success, well, you've got to start with point B. You've got to start with the end in mind. If you're not doing that, it's impossible to genuinely put together a real investment plan. So I think that's something you have to really ask yourself 
and make sure that you're, you're getting that type of advice. Because if you're not, you don't have a process-driven strategy. Hey, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have an event-driven strategy or a process-driven strategy in my portfolio? What we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and you saved at least $200,000 for your retirement, Ryan and I will run for you your own personal 360 financial portal. You know, if you're one of those next few callers, here's exactly what you can expect to see. We're going to review your tax return and make sure you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you under the current code. Secondly, we're going to look at your estate plan to make sure it's not an IOU to the IRS. Be certain that everything's titled properly, that you have the correct trust, that your beneficiaries are titled correctly. And lastly, we're going to look at all of your investments, regardless of where they're held. Now, I know your monthly statements are just coming in. You don't have to open up all those envelopes. Throw it into a shopping bag. Make an appointment. Bring it in. We're going to take all that information and reduce it down into our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is a simple three-page document. It's going to show you everything you need to know about your portfolio and break it down to the three core components of a successful strategy. Diversification, fees, income. We want to be certain that you're diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. You know, who likes to be overcharged? I don't, but many people are because they don't know about those costs that are embedded in that annuity contract or in those prospectuses on those different mutual funds that you may own. And lastly, who doesn't want to optimize income? And we're going to tie it all together into one wealth projection, which will answer the age-old question for you. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you? utilizing strategies that my family has now perfected over four decades. That's correct. For 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from their financial point A to their goals, to their dreams, to their point B with the least amount of risk and with as much certainty as fiduciaries can provide. So give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-752. 6692. We have a few slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, be one of the next few callers at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. It's a comprehensive review. We're going to look at everything in one place. Bird's eye view at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- 752-6692. This is your shot to get a full review. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Payne Capital Management. Call 844-PLAN-NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. Find out how to better prepare for your financial future. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest initiatives is always education, education. And our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We Don't Want Your IRA to Be an IOU to the IRS. You can download it for free if you simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Again, that's the word bullish to 555-888. You can get our newest guide. That's the truth about taxes and retirement. Will the government inherit IRA? We don't want that to happen. So check out our guide here at 555-888. Just text that word bullish, B U L L. ISH to 555-888. And it's time for my favorite part of the show, our spotlight segment, where each week what we try to do is dissect a real financial plan and uncover the flaws or what we call pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-A for the record, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And this morning, we have a very special guest, my colleague and Bob's colleague, one of our two certified financial planners, the superstar, 
Courtney Dominguez. Good morning, Court. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, as always. It's always good to hear that voice. <laughs> Um, I'll take that. Take what you can get, right? (laughs) Um, And you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give us the rundown on what they were doing with their investing retirement and and some of the flaws they had in their strategy? Yeah. And it's actually kind of ironic because we say, well, we're going to be dissecting this financial plan. And the interesting thing about this case, and I see this with a lot of cases, is they don't actually have any sort of plan or any sort of concerted effort to put together a strategy for them. Whereas instead, they just have a collection of investments and a collection of things that have been sold to them. And this is one of the biggest issues I see sometimes where people will just have a whole bunch of different stocks and say, oh, they're doing well, so I'm okay with this. But we also need to be looking forward and be saying, okay, but is this the best use of your money? Is this going to accomplish your goals? Is this getting the income you need? So rather than just having a collection of investments, you need to have something that's really specific to what you're trying to accomplish. And I have a lot of people who don't have any sort of plan like that, which is kind of interesting. I think it, um, Courtney, the way I look at it with a lot of people is they think their their goal of investing is to make money. Yes. But truly, if you're investing properly, you have to know why do you need to make money, right? Do you need to overcome inflation? You know, how much money do you need to make in order to retire comfortably or have a lifetime of income that you can't outlive? And and I agree with you. Too many people end up with a collection of investments on the concept that, oh, I'm going to make money. And then mm-hmm. what happens in the years where you don't make money, right? That people end up blowing yeah. up their strategy and never achieving their goals. So what did you find here? Yeah, and actually, I think a, what, like one of the perfect examples of this was this client actually needs extra income because they're coming into retirement mm-hmm. and they said, okay, I want X amount more coming out of my accounts every month. And no advisor ever had the conversation with them of which account should you take it from? How much are you going to take? What is this going to look in the long run for you? They would just mm-hmm. send them whatever they needed. And then after the fact, they would look at it and say, oh, maybe that wasn't the best decision. So no mm-hmm. one actually had any sort of forward-looking planning advice for him. It's more him just making decisions and people just taking action, not actually having the conversation, which is kind of scary, actually, but you need to make sure you're watching for that. But yeah, basically, what ends specifically with this client, they are a lot more aggressive than they need to be. We went and looked at their goals, and they have done a fantastic job of saving, but they have over 75% of their investments just in individual stocks, specifically in your big U.S. companies which has a lot of downside potential that they don't need. They've done a good job of savings. They can get away with a lot less risk than they have right now. And a more conservative strategy in my mind, if you don't need the risk, why take it? I have to think too, I mean- um, You know, one of those individual stocks wasn't sell gene because that's down about 50% in in the last three weeks. Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, And that that type of risk is just completely unnecessary when you are a year away from retirement. Just out of curiosity, Court, when you run these numbers and I mean, obviously that's a lot of risk. And the problem with that kind of risk is it's great when the market's going up, you get the rosy colored sunglasses on. As we like to say, it's the problem is when that tide goes out, you're going to be swimming naked, which is not a good place to be. Did they even realize that they're swimming naked? Meaning, you know, they're close to retirement and God forbid we get a big market correction you know, they're going to take a big hit based on how they're allocated right now. Exactly. And I think a lot of people almost have been forgetting that. I think people deep Mm -hmm. down know that, but a lot of people I'm meeting with, well, they're saying, but these investments have been doing so well for about eight years now, since 2008. But the problem is just because it has been doing well for a couple of years doesn't mean that will continue in the future and doesn't mean you can see another situation where that specific section of the markets can be down like 40 to 50 percent. And this is the time where you need to make sure you're mitigating that risk because basically a 75% in the stock markets, that's for somebody I would recommend who's maybe in their 30s should be invested like that, not somebody who's close to their 70s right now. So it's a lot more risk than they need. It's a time to play hard. It's a time to take a few chips off the table and uh, just bank the house's money. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And that's what I love too. I see you put everything into, you build a customized portal for them. And that's the beauty of it because you can sit there and you can look. Once you put everything in one place and they ha- it looks like they have a- several different accounts, a couple different custodians where the money's held, but when you actually put it all in one place and you can see everything together, you really get the impression like there's no strategy here. This is a collection of investments 
you know, there, there's no rhyme or reason for why they own all these things and how it in any way, shape or form correlates to what their goals are in retirement. Exactly. And, and you're right, Rod, because, you know, stocks have had great relative performance, but you can't buy lunch with relative performance. You need cash. So you need to have a portfolio that distributes, you know, cash and income on an annual basis, and you need it to grow over inflation. And looking at the projections that you did here, Courtney, if they follow your advice or they followed your advice, they're now set for life. Exactly. Yeah. And we just we just need to make sure at this point we are getting the growth they need, but we're also in the protection stage where we don't want to screw this up for them. They've done a great job. They can retire. We want to make sure they can continue to stay in retirement and live their lifestyle. So this is the point where we, we need to make sure they have some protection in there as well. And yeah, a lot of that's going to come from income and bonds, not just your big individual stocks, because that's going to, it could really screw up their projections if they don't take some action on it. Well, great job on this case, Court. I mean, this is clearly, this is a place where they would be blindsided by the risk they have had they not been proactive, took some action, sat down with you. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I'm in the same boat, I have no idea what risk I'm taking. I don't know how financially organized I am. You know, am I on a scale of one to 10? Maybe I'm a three. How would you like to be a 10? Well, here's your shot. We have a couple slots left and we will run our total financial master plan. If you have over $200,000, we'll do this exact same review for you. We'll take all your financial documents, information. We're going to simplify, organize everything into one portal so we can see everything in one place, our 360 portal. So you know exactly what you own, why you own it. How does it correlate to your projections? Are you going to be able to retire? Are you taking too much risk? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all your investments and we're going to put them on a very simple three-page spreadsheet, our investment analysis spreadsheet. And we're going to look at to see, do you have a collection of investments? Do you have a proper investment strategy in place? You know, What kind of income is your portfolio generating? Can we increase the amount of income? We we're able to increase this couple's income by almost $5,000 a year. Can we do the same thing for you? You have to have income in retirement. We're going to look at fees. Do you have a lot of high-cost mutual funds, annuities, a lot of hidden fees in your portfolio? We're going to break down all the fees so you know what you're really paying and see if we can reduce the cost on your portfolio. And we're going to look at asset allocation and strategy. We're going to give you a bird's eye view of what all your accounts are doing in one place, one portal, so you can tell, are you properly diversified? Do you have too much money concentrated in one area? What pitfalls or risks do you really have in your portfolio? We're going to show you exactly what risks you have and how to basically protect yourself against it. Then we're going to tie it all together and do our total financial master plan. And we're going to determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now? Bob and I, Courtney, have worked on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So here's your chance to get financially organized by giving us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers with over 200,000 saved for retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 6692. There's no obligation, no cost. Just give us a call. Another awesome, fantastic show this morning. Courtney, or as we say, C Money. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us on the show this morning. Always our pleasure. And as always, have a great weekend and be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.